Greetings and welcome to Old Drunken Discography, where all friends and fans come together to BS, argue, occasionally agree, and discuss a musical artist. This week's artist is Queens of the Stone Age. That is Tim's pick. That is Tim. That's me. Bill did not pick Queens of the Stone Age, but that's Bill. Hi. And I'm Jason. If you missed the previous videos, there is a link playlist down below go check those out i'm you know what i'm not even going to show you our rankings you need need to go watch our videos and let us know how we did um as you can see we changed clothes it's been a new night it's been a whole nother week so you know we've we've matured since then that's right we're talking era vulgaris who wants to start us off with this record I mean, I can, but I'm really curious to see what you guys have to say first, because I know how this album was perceived in the fan base, and I know uh, my own personal journey with it. So I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. All right. So with you saying that, Tim, I'll start off this album. Okay. So turning on the screw, I thought it was a good guitar solo, but was not their best intro i actually put not a good intro song um uh it's between this and one other one probably tied for their worst intro honestly which does say something because i've liked all their intros to this point and there's an intro after this that i absolutely love so take that for what it's worth um six six sick i thought it was okay not fantastic it just for me it happened um i'm designer holy cow reading my notes radio singing is oh uh the radio singing part the the stuff they do with the radio uh not radio but like the radio sound you know where it's kind of like muffle like you're talking through you know either a walkie talk or something like yo kind of like it's that weird I, hear, yeah. I know what you're saying yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've always had mixed feelings with on a song but god damn did they do it well in this song um Into the Hollow I thought the instruments were phenomenal behind it I wasn't as big of a fan as the vocals though with it I will say that and then we get into the B side of this album well that's not the B side yet but then we got Misfit Love here yeah, Misfit it, Love is actually the start of the C side. Oh. Well, I'll tell you this. The C side gets pretty goddamn good. Um, it has a very long intro. But it builds very well into the song. Um, great song for me, the top song contender. Battery Acid. It sounds like a older song kind of when I was listening to it but it's still pretty fucking good um made it with you damn right you made it with me um <laughs> god it's I love like that funky you know beat they've got going on with it kind of the whole funky vibe with it like oh, make it with you like I actually wrote, like, reminiscent of, like, Bee Gees, kind of, is what I wrote as, like, my reference to it. But it's different enough that your average Joe, especially 2007, probably wouldn't have thought about Bee Gees in, when listening to that song. Top song contender again. Threes and Sevens. Also an absolute banger of a song. Um, it really got my energy going. Absolutely sick guitar throughout it top song contender again for me so then i'm guessing these last three we're going to begin to the d side here then right well it's no because this is a triple um okay threes so and is... seven starts the e side <laughs> wait so and there's supposed... a bonus track that's not at the end of the album so <laughs> interesting <laughs> And actually, I'm looking you at the have four choices here. I don't know if anybody could see that. You have four choices here. A is I'm on fire. 
B, I'm on strike. C, blow me, I'm hot. And D, your perfect match. <laughs> blow me, I'm hot makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, your future. future. Uh, I love it's got like a got a smooth groove to it. Thought it was a phenomenal song again. River in the Road. It was a good song. Um It definitely bumped and everything. It was a banger. Uh can't read what I wrote there, but I thought it was a good song. And then River in the Road, I'll lump rug pay, run pig run together here for a little bit. Both, I thought, good tandem closer, solid end to the album. Kind of curious to see what you guys say and where this ends up getting placed for everyone. God, son of a bitch. You did not give me enough for me to guess where the hell you're putting it. Oh, <laughs> I'll go next, sure. Turning on the screw. Not my favorite opener, but still decent. It does get better the longer it goes. So I, uh, when you were talking about it, I was like, yep, yep. Sick, 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 sick guitar riffs. I'm designer with lyrics like, you've made me an offer that I can't refuse because either way I get screwed. Counter proposal, I go home and jerk off. Uh, it's a top <laughs> song contender. Um, <laughs> Into the Hollow was really pretty, especially the back half. Almost reminded me of like 2010 Foo Fighters. Misfit Love, lots of noises going on. This album deserves to be listened to with headphones. Reminds me a lot of early 90s noise bands like a Pavement or early Beck or something. Good shit. Battery Acid, holy shit. This song smacks you in the face at the beginning, but still has super pretty sections. It's pretty brilliant. You can tell he took his time writing this record. Make It With You. I feel like I've typed these two words so many times in these notes, but holy shit. Top song contender. Hell, this may be my number one. I fucking love this song. He's channeling his inner Jim Morrison on those verses. And then it has some R&B shit going on in the chorus with I want to make it want to make it with you. Sexy yes. as hell. This is brilliant. Threes and sevens. And then it goes into threes and sevens. I mean, come on. Suture, probably my low point on the album. After all the insane things going on and everything up to this point, this one felt too simple and out of place. It's not bad, and I like most of these songs, but the longer they go, the better they get. I mean, that outro makes up for everything else. You know what? I changed my mind. This one kicks ass, too. Uh, River in the Road. Now, I like the Oz. The drumming was almost military-sounding, or like they were stalking you. It was so good. Run, Pig, Run. I mean, damn. Running Joke was great as well, and I had to check out the title track that was left off. It would have made a hell of an opening track. Or a closing track. It was so fucking good. The Fun Machine took a shit and died. Could have been a top song contender. <laughs> Era felt more experimental and noisy than the previous album. You also albums. got Christian Brothers going out west. And, um, oh God, what's the other one? The Elliot Smith song. Um, yeah, there's a couple other covers from this. Or, uh, yeah, B-sides that are well worth checking out. I, I think they pulled this one off spe spectacularly. I loved everything about this record. The cover art, the music from front to back, the B-sides I heard, everything. I loved fucking this record. I'm I'm currently eyeing it on vinyl. All right. Now I'm really curious with everything you've said, Jason, what Tim's about to say about this record. Yeah, you know, that went a lot better than I thought. I've always kind of viewed this album as their Saint Anger. Really? Really? It's the production is really rough the first time you hear it. This one, when it came out, uh, First Day Buyer, um, I even got the Ipecac release on the vinyl. Can't get this one anymore. Um, it's noisy. It is noisy. It's really it, noisy. It is, but like, yeah, I thought that helped it, though. Well, and I do too. I oh, really <laughs> look at it. <laughs> Good to um, know. But, but I've always been in the position where I'm kind of the one having to defend this album. Oh, I, you know, that doesn't surprise me. Like, I mean, you guys are going to be shit before we start recording here. Like, oh, you know, like you still do last bit research. Like, yes. It's like I go through, like, I see other people like, hey, 
just for shits and giggles, what did other people write the records? Oh, yeah, I, I do too. Yeah, we, we all do that. And, I mean, it was like, huh. Okay. Well, I fucking liked it, so good luck. I came up with, I, I came out with, like, thinking it was going to be a hot take. That, that's what, and then you basically repeated everything I said almost just like, oh, all right, oh, Tim. I fucking love what, this one. What are we doing? <laughs> so, so, yeah. Uh, why just... it sucks. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is always one that um, the more I listened to it, the more I loved it. Uh, hearing some of these songs live um, really brought them to life. Um, yeah, I mean, starting off with Turning on the Screw, yeah, I can see where it's probably not the best opener, but it's got some of my favorite lyrics they've ever done. Um, I mean, you want a reason? How's about because? You ain't a has-been if you never was. Uh, you got the question? Please don't ask it. It puts the lotion in the basket. Um, yeah, no, that's uh, I love turning on the screw. I think it's really funky and uh, just the sound of a band having fun. 666 was the first single. Uh, it did pretty good. It's it's probably my low point on the album though. It uh it's good, but it's a little silly. But I do love that guitar riff in yeah. it. Um Yeah, I'm designer. It's one of those songs where peop I play that for people and they're like, turn this shit off. And I'm like, no, this song is amazing. I love when they go into that little bridge part at the end when it finally like turns into a normal song. It sounds so good. Um, Into the Hollow, so good. It's like, it could have been on Lullabies. It's uh, just a great song. And then, yeah, normally you would get Misfit Love followed by Battery Acid. That's a one-two punch that I highly endorse. But on the vinyl, you do get that split up with Running Joke, which is a, like a little acoustic jam. Uh, it fits really well. It's I could great. see that working. I, yeah, I could see that working. That it work. works really well. Um, but yeah, uh, Misfit Love is the sound of this band being better than your band. <laughs> <laughs> like it, That is just like top-notch musicianship going yeah. on in that intro. And the way they build it, yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> same with battery acid uh make it with you has the distinction of being the only desert sessions song on this release hmm. and it's also going to be the last desert session songs in this discography Ooh. i see that um so the end of an era because that's been something that they've been doing since album one and something that i've always appreciated um uh, i've you, I heard Queens of the Stone Age first, of course, and when I went back and discovered the Desert Sessions and fell in love, uh, this is one of those ones where, like, the Desert Sessions version might be better because it's got PJ Harvey on it, too. I would be interested to hear that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's good. I love That's on 9 and 10. One. Yeah. Threes and sevens, you guys both nailed it. It's a banger. I love that song. And then you get to the last three songs on this album, which I think are ridiculously underrated. I think Suture Up Your Future is start to finish just incredible. River in the Road, yeah, it's very militaristic. It's very hypnotic. It's, uh, it's just, it's one of those ones you just turn it up. And then Run Pig Run is a contender for their best closer, I would say. Musically, it's very interesting. He's playing behind the nut. He's doing all kinds of crazy stuff in that intro. And then the lyrics again. When I was young, we used to play the game called Hide and Seek. Someone go hide. I'd count to ten. You probably never played. Instead, you talked a game of sheep. A skill you almost do perfect. Run, pig, run. Here I come. It's so good. It's so, so good. good. So good. Yeah, no, I, I really love this album. And 
yeah, the 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 B sides like the Fun Machine is it great, you know. You ain't Robert Mitchum. <laughs> You're ten pounds of shit in a five pound bag. And then the title track that did not make the album but is available out there, uh, called Era Vulgaris, actually has Trent Reznor on there. So you know you're doing pretty good when Trent Reznor doesn't make the album. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, like I mentioned, they do a cover of White Wedding. They do Going Out West by Tom Waits. They got a Elliott Smith cover. And then there's, there's Christian Brothers. And I'm blanking on the last one. Let me... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't listen to most of the covers, but I, I was just more interested in the... Needles in the Camel's Eye. That's a Brian Eno cover. Okay. Yeah, that's a great song, too. Um, yeah, there, and then there's a lot of, like, uh, remixes of some of these songs. There's, there's a, They were busy. Yeah, it's a great album. It really is. And I think it's one of those ones where it was kind of a turning point for a lot of people that were following the band. Because like threes and sevens was in a guitar hero or rock band or something that song kind of blew up, and make it with you is kind of an underground classic. I know I don't know anybody who's heard that one. Oh yeah, I've never listened to that again. I and that, I couldn't you. fathom that. I couldn't. Fathom yeah, that. yeah. That song uh, is so good. I mean, this album is great. This album is great. Uh, it's a just a great continuation of a discography now that is pretty close to flawless. Uh, the color codes will tell all color the color codes, codes will tell all, I guess. Yes. All. But for me, I'm still like fully on board with this band. I could say that. Yeah. All right. I have yet to be disappointed. Got the hard part coming up here. All right, I'm going to say Tim. It's better than self-titled. Is it? I think so. <laughs> I don't know if I do. Really? Okay. That was way off. <laughs> Again, love the album. Let's see how far Bill and I go. Are Bill better than the self-titled? You're right so far. Better than Lullabies for me. Is it better? It's better than that. It's better than Def. You nailed that, which is... I find it interesting how much that that album is sliding down for me. Right, least. right. It, that's <laughs> fucked like, up. Like, well, I think... Initially, thinking Queen of the Stone Age, I'm like, oh my god, like this is the Queen of the Stone Age album. It's like, it is. Just because it's popular it is. doesn't mean it's the best. Oh, the rated R is where it gets hard. I'm gonna say it's above rated R for you. For me? Yeah, it's above rated R for me. It's 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 my number one. I mean, I'm happy to see it get the love for sure. This album was fucking. I like that noisy shit though. Like I like the, the. I I, I definitely can see what you're talking about with the production, but like, and and this is nothing but a string of couplets coming out of my mouth right now. The Queen of Stories, it's like they're so simplistic that that noise helped at times. I felt like. I wouldn't say they're simplistic. I oh, would say you, they're. You know what I mean, though, when I say that, right? Like, I mean, it's not... Yeah, there's a lot of simple... Like, there's a lot of... Like, there's a simple drum beat and a simple guitar riff and a simple bass. But but, but they're like, all dynamic working together. Yeah, yes. they're, it, yes. it doesn't sound simple. Well, and I think that there's a, a lot of um, smoke and mirrors there. Because, like, for example, the drum beats, you say they're simple. But I'm listening to them going, yeah, but they're, like, simple beyond... They're like right, so yeah. complicated in what they're actually doing and what you're like, having like to they're just doing. Dun, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't, we're not talking like Ringo Starr type shit. We're, you yeah, know, it's, it's definitely, it's not boom tap. They're doing all kinds of really crazy stuff. 
Okay, so sim- simple is not the right word. More more repetitive. Like they'll do yeah. a cool riff, but they'll do it yeah. over and over and over again. So it sounds. Simplistic was a terrible word for me to use, but like that that was the first word that came to mind. Yeah, it, it was a terrible word to use, though. Do you like it better than lullabies, though? Do I? That is a question, Jason. I don't think you do. I do not. Okay. See, you got those fucking fake glasses on. You got your poker face on. I can't tell. <laughs> you cheat. See my eyebrows when I raise them, though. <laughs> and and I don't know if you guys saw that. It's you know how most stere- albums will have like stereo or mono on it. Yeah. This says you have mono. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. I like. I mean, I, everything about this record, the, from the design of the album cover to the music, the logo, the B sides, like it all just clicks for me. Like this is to me one of their best. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm all for I, it. I'm not overly surprised, but I am mildly surprised that like Tim put this down below. I am too. Below. I am did, too. But like. It, it, it's, a, it's not overly surprising just given all the rankings I've looked at beforehand and this was one of the lowest um, albums uh, most of the rankings I watched for Queens of the Stone Age which I mean I mean, Tim's the fan here so he's probably well, more and it makes sense. he knows way more than we do Jason right and this is why I'm a fan because such a solid album but I, like look at what came before it it's hard for me to actually go no like it's hard for me to objectively say which one's better or not after the first album because they're all like so far amazing, and we got a couple more that are going to fall under that category too. I'm and... curious what you're going to say here when we get to Clockwork. That's the one I'm real curious on. I'm, uh, you know, I said that I like this was the, this logo the best. That's been changed. It's been replaced. That's that's the best fucking logo. Okay. Yeah, the artwork on here is pretty top notch. Yeah. All right. So up next, we're talking I, clockwork. Before we go there, I should mention that like people that did make the album, of course, you got Lanigan's on River in the Road, uh, Brody's on Make It With You, Julian Casablancas from The Strokes is on Six Six Sick. Like they, they're they're keeping up with the the guest stars. Yeah, they keep it. And then reading. this is also um No, no, wait, that's the next album. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Um yeah, stick around, like, subscribe. So far no slaps. This has been a pretty peaceful session for us. Um Don't worry, the slaps are coming. Okay. All right. Uh, I ain't got shit else to say. Like, subscribe, <laughs> do all that crap, YouTube. We appreciate you. Help us hit our goal of 690 subscribers. I think we're at 403. So thank you for subscribing. If you're out there, check out our Patreon. Blah, blah, blah. Be safe. Make good decisions. <laughs>